Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and today we're going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I know it's late, but I've been gone for a while and let's see how this goes. It has been a very long time since I've filmed anything and even longer time since I've posted anything and I am happy to be back, kind of. I'm using this sort of as like a soft launch of getting back into booktube and kind of checking in saying hi yeah I'm here I'm not dead I haven't fully given up my channel but it's been a while I think the last time I posted I can't remember if it was my April wrap-up or March wrap-up but like I'm very behind on monthly wrap-ups and basically everything and a lot of stuff has just fallen to shit so booktube kind of was the I guess straw that broke the camel knees back. I'm glad to be filming again. I'm glad to be doing this because I've been wanting to film for quite, quite some time. I just have not had the energy. I figured instead of doing the very daunting task of like filming all my separate wrap ups, I don't know if I'm going to combine whatever because I haven't read as much as I normally do, but I have still read a decent amount. I'm pretty sure I have at least 40 books to talk about. So we'll see how that goes. But I figured let's just do a quick check-in, the mid-year book freakout tag. It's late, of course, shocker, I'm late at everything, and just see how this goes. I'll have the original creators linked. I don't think either of them post anymore, not sure, but um, let's just see how this goes. Starting with best book you read this year, and I'm going to take that as best like standalone book I've read because if we add sequels and stuff, we would be here for a very long time and my answer would be slightly different. I have two books. Um, I don't know if I've talked about either of them in a wrap-up yet, and both of them are sci-fi, which is very different for me, and both are standalones. The first being Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. Love this book. Five stars. This is a queer romance slash murder mystery, also set in space. It was great. I had a great, great time with it. My other one is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is also an adult standalone sci-fi, also queer. And um, it follows so, sort of like a multiverse of universes. I'm not going to go into what these are about because if we we're here, I'd be, we'd, I'd be here there here all day. I really enjoyed this. Thought this was really well paced. Really liked our main character and really think like the science and those concepts, the way they were explored, was really well done. Really enjoyed this as well. For the best sequel, I read this year has to go to um last argument of kings by joe abercrombie this is the third and final book in the um first law trilogy holy shit is this good and i'm already being interrupted this is wonderful anyway my mind was blown when i reached the end of this thing the way this series wraps up in particular is just like so genius so like a plus i think this is overall my favorite read of the year but we had to split this accordingly to the question so absolutely love this Ooh, also the oleander sword by um tasha suri was also fantastic but that comes out in august i don't know if i should be picking books from the second half of this year question three asks a new release you haven't read yet but want to and honestly i couldn't find any ones in terms of purchases i haven't bought a lot of new books like newly released titles the one I'm choosing is The Final Strife by Sara L. Arifi. This is the start of an adult fantasy trilogy that I'm very interested in, and it's been so long since I marked it as want to read. I have no idea what this is about. I think this is a North African slash Arabian inspired tale, and the reviews on this has, have been super glowing, but because this is a trilogy, I'm not feeling like super fussed and super pressed to get to it immediately. I've kind of been in the mood of like, wrapping up some older things in series but I really do want to read this and I think I'll at least purchase it so I have it in my collection so when the mood strikes I can read it but it's I do still really want to get to it. For most anticipated release of the second half of 2022 I plan on still doing this video even though again it will be late because I like to do these in half year installments I have four notable ones. I'll go through them quickly. The Oleander Sword, obviously, just talked about it, but I have read it. Babel by R.F. Kuang, who's surprised. Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. I really hope this comes out when it's set to. 
um, because the publication has been changed on this like multiple times, but I do really, really want to read it. And the fourth one is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. I just finished my reread of Legendborn and loved it again, so I cannot wait for this book to come out. Biggest disappointment of the year? I've had some pretty big disappointments and I've rated a solid amount of books one stars but ones that disappointed me and the like the stakes weren't even that high and still managed to really disappoint me notably is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. I hate this book. I hated reading it. It's one of the stupidest finales and conclusions I've read in quite some time. I gave this one star. I'm sure I haven't talked about it yet but I will happily rip this apart when I get to. This was such a waste of time. Things got incredibly nonsensical. I just, I kept reading thinking, okay, no, it's gonna get better. And then you just kind of see where things are going. You're like, no, not really that. And then like the final, final bit just really ticked me off. One star, waste of my time. And I'm really disappointed overall in the course of that trilogy. I also was really disappointed in A Lot Like Adios by Alexis. I can't remember if it's Dara or Daria. I loved the first book in this series. You had me at Ola. It was really close to being a five-star romance for me, but this one just didn't do it for me. It's a second chance romance, childhood friends to lovers, but they weren't on speaking terms. And I just wasn't on board with the connection. The author didn't sell me on it. Pacing was all over the place and I was really let down because I was so looking forward to reading it because again, really loved the author's first book in that series. New favorite author? I'm tentatively going to say Joe Abercrombie even though I haven't loved every single thing I've read from him and I have read from him in the past but he is the author I've most read from this year and I've consistently really enjoyed his stuff. I'm still reading more of his stuff and planning on get, getting to most of the first law stuff in 2022 and I've really liked it. I can't fully say he's an absolute favorite yet but I think he really could and he is definitely the closest I could put on this list. For newest fictional crush, usually I skip this question because I'm like I'm old I don't get crushes but in terms of like a romantic hero or heroine that I did have a crush on or really really liked, I really loved Rahul from The Roommate Risk by Talia Hibbert. He was a sweet bean, loved him, he was incredibly in love with his best friend of many years, but I didn't hate the way this whole story was done, so loved him, he was great. I loved both of the main characters in Bet On It, can I tell you any of their names? Absolutely not. I, like, they were definitely crush worthy for both of them, and I'm proud of myself for answering this question for once, because usually, again, I skip it. In terms of newest favorite character, I think the closest I can say for this is Glockta. Uh, he is part of the first law world and again I read the first book in like late 2021 but I have fallen in love with like the first law trilogy this year and I absolutely love Glockta. His sense of humor and just like sense of being is fantastic. I love Glockta but it also takes a lot for me to say like like an absolute favorite character of all time but he is one that I think could be. A book that made me cry. Um, I'm a crier, but I don't cry a crazy amount during books, but um, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee definitely made me shed a tear or two throughout certain moments. This is a multi-generational tale starting first in Korea and then in Japan and profiles this Korean family in Japan whilst Koreans were like very much discriminated against. I learned a lot about that time period and like the political instability of Korea and Japan which was interesting but these characters were so standout. The story was so standout. I gave this story a historical fiction book five stars which so rarely rarely happens to me. Um, I love this book and I definitely shed a tear too. For a book that made me happy definitely bet, up, bet on it by Jody. Don't remember their last name. I'm very sorry. This is a five star romance one of the only books I've given five stars to that is a romance and I think the first time in quite some time loved it love the characters their chemistry there is a bit more of some hard-hitting things that the characters are dealing with but they were both like in therapy and like acknowledging things which I really loved and watching them work through it and then also come together love this book if you like romance definitely like take a look at it it was quite a fun time
Also, Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor brought me a lot of joy. This was my first time reading it. Um, it is book like 2.5 in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. And I had never read it before, even though I love the trilogy. I have been rereading the trilogy this year, and I just have to read the final book now. But this one is basically like one magical night between the two human main characters and like their like first date and interaction and like st the start of their love story, which is just really sweet. Um, there's also like pictures and images in here. It's it's a really nice time. Char two characters I really like and um, yeah, just a well put together story and brought me joy. My favorite book to movie adaptation, at first I was like, I don't watch these. I don't pay attention to them. I always read the book and then forget to watch the adaptation. But that is a stone cold lie. There are many adaptations I have watched and liked this year and I don't even watch that much in terms of movie and TV. My number one favorite adaptation or inspired tale is um, Fire Island. This is a modern Pride and Prejudice inspired tale. It follows two queer men. like as the Darcy and Lizzie character and I loved it. For a modern take this has a lot of Pride and Prejudice elements and it's done very like well. I also loved Heartstopper. I was never going to pick up the graphic novel, wasn't particularly very interested in the show. Everyone kept talking about it, I watched it. Um, it brought my dead heart a lot of joy and I also read the first volume of the com comic graphic novel series and enjoyed that a lot too. And Bridgerton season two is really good. The next question is, is really calling me out. It says the favorite video you've filmed, uploaded, put together, and I'm gonna say absolutely none of them. I have very little recollection of what I've posted this year. I was sporadic at best, even when I was posting. I'm going to, actually you know what, let's pick this video because I'm proud of myself for doing this, coming back and not just giving up which is kind of what I wanted to do for a little bit of time. For the most beautiful book I've read this year, I have two answers and for weirdly different reasons. The first definitely has to be Kai Kai by Vaishnavi Patel. This book is so beautiful. I technically DNF this book halfway through. For whatever reason, it was not holding my attention. And then I went away for 10 days and I did not want to bring this sucker with me and just never picked it up again. I do want to continue slash maybe restart it. I did really like what I had read, but I just never felt any motivation to pick it up, so I put it down tentatively. And uh, another purchase that they're not necessarily the most beautiful things ever, but brought me joy and I just kind of want to show you. I finally bit the bullet and purchased the entire Stormlight Archive um, books that are out. Indigo was having a really good sale that was like buy three get the fourth one free and I thought about it hemmed and hawed about it and I was like you know what Isabella you want to read these books you've been meaning to do it for years you ha I've read the first one I've been meaning to continue on and actually get caught up and I was like you know what let's just do it are they the prettiest things ever no were they a purchase I was very happy with getting yes I just kicked that hit that um yes was very happy with that and I also just realized I skipped a question so going all the way back to biggest surprise of the year definitely Pachinko is one of them I don't like historical fiction like eight times out of ten really don't like it so surprise for me to like it let alone love it huge and then also Ray Bear by Jordan Ifuiko this is a young adult fantasy book and more modern young adult fantasy releases just really haven't connected with me I haven't really enjoyed as much but Ray Bear really was quite the surprise for very many reasons I'm excited to discuss why I liked it so much this is a solid four star book but um I really enjoyed it was really interested in the characters the continuation of the story so absolutely am excited for to continue out the series I really liked it the final question that I have not skipped is what do you need to read by the end of the year I don't plan to really push myself on anything I had a lot of goals for this year in terms of certain metrics and stuff I wanted to hit but I am not going to push myself at all I have been 
just feeling really lethargic in terms of my reading because of so many different reasons that I don't want to give myself any more reason to not pick up a book. So I'm just kind of go, gonna go with the flow and read what I want. The one thing I am going to still continue to do is read, finish out the 10 books I had to read for this year. I think I'm already halfway if not further into that so it's not going to be like super difficult. I would like to possibly reread The Way of Kings and continue on in the series but I'm not holding myself to that. Something just went in my eye and I just plan on catching up on Abercrombie's releases, First Law related, and possibly finish Kaikai if I feel so inclined. It's really strange like kind of giving myself leeway and being a mood-ish reader. I do have to plan out sort of slightly ahead what I'm going to read because if not chaos ensues and I read nothing. I'm also currently participating in the magical readathon so for this month at least my TBR is set. Anyway, thank you so so much for watching. I'm very glad to be back. I guess the next thing I want to do is my like most anticipated releases and then get into the hell of a journey that we'll be planning and filming my wrap-up. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for clicking into the video if it's been so long since I'm gone. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you again hopefully very soon. Bye!